Parliament will do so much better. Thank you. I call uh, Chris Bishop. Oh, thank you very much, Mr Chair. Look, uh, Mr Chair, I'm a, uh, a young man, a young member of Parliament, um, a youngster in political terms. I've seen a little bit of Parliament and I've worked around politics for a while. I have not seen two weeks like we've seen in the last couple. Just extraordinary. The contortions in the opposition benches, the, 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 the infighting and the... Uh, no, no, the, the... no, no, order, order. That's not in this debate. I just ask the member to focus on the contents of this appropriations debate. Uh, that's the general debate issues that you were talking about, and that's not part of this. Chris Bishop. Oh, thank, thank you, Mr Ch uh, Chair. I was just making a couple of prefatory remarks. Sir, I want to focus my uh, brief remarks on um, the government's investment in ultra-fast broadband, which I, I think when they come to write the history of this uh, government, which has been in uh, office for nine years now and, uh, uh, God willing, another three after September 23, they will look back and they will say that it was the investment in ultra-fast broadband that was one of the defining achievements of this government. Because it, it's ha hard to actually explain sometimes how the rest of the world looks with a, quite a degree of envy and admiration uh, with what is going on in New Zealand with ultra-fast broadband. Uh, and uh, credit where credit's due, some of that is due to uh, the action of David Cunliffe, uh, Honourable David Cunliffe, when he was Minister of Telecommunications with Local Loop Unbundling. And then, of course, that public-private -private public partnership model uh, developed by Stephen Joyce when he was uh, Minister, of, um, uh, Minister for Broadband, I guess you would say, uh, in the early days of this government. Uh, and I, um, I had the uh, opportunity to visit uh, a, a company in Upper Hutt uh, just a couple of weeks ago called Strictly Savvy, which is one of those companies that is taking advantage of the uh, opportunities provided by ultra-fast broadband. It's based in a, a small... Uh, well, it's, it's, a, it's a small unit in a very large development in Railway Avenue uh, in Upper Hutt, a uh, repurposed old factory, uh, and they provide virtual assistance services. And you might say, well, what's that? Well, basically, they have a team of people sitting there, and they're growing very rapidly. They're up to 20 staff. <coughs> and they sit there in Upper Hutt, and they provide, uh, ver they provide basically executive assistance services and graphic design and website design and online bookkeeping for Xero and MYOB and other things as well, all from Upper Hutt. And their clients are in Wellington and Auckland and Southland and uh, all around uh, New Zealand. And basically, they have a team of people there that are contracted uh, in order to do the work that people all around the country want. And it's only possible because of ultra-fast broadband. And it's only possible. It started in the last three or four years. They're an award-winning business. They're growing very quickly. And it's only possible because of ultra-fast broadband. Uh, and it's an example of... Uh, it's an innovative company. It's an example of Kiwi ingenuity. Uh, and they're doing great things. And that's what UFB can do. It can provide... Uh, new businesses and new opportunities and new innovations and that's the whole point actually about when you make investments in infrastructure like ultra-fast broadband is you sometimes don't know what's coming down the line. Uh, you don't know what people are going to do with it. Uh, in the same way when you build a road or you build a railway network, it's not actually clear sometimes exactly what opportunities will be presented but you know that they will exist and that's why uh, you do it. And that's why uh, this government is making such a strong investment in, in infrastructure like we see in the appropriation uh, bill uh, that we're debating for the House. So I welcome the government's investment in ultra-fast broadband, their ongoing investment, including in this budget. And I also want to touch on the investment in the Rural Broadband Initiative. And people might say, well, Lower Hutt, uh, the Hutt South seat, that's, there's not much uh, rural uh, part of Lower Hutt, but they would be wrong. Uh, there are uh, small pockets of uh, rural uh, idyllic lifestyle uh, in the Hutt, particularly in uh, the great place of Wainui Amata, uh, and uh, they're crying out for a cell phone tower down the coast road uh, because uh, the Rumataka Forest Park, which you know hundreds of thousands of people in New Zealand visit every year, and uh, my good uh, colleague who's just taken the chair, Scott Simpson, uh, I'm sure will be out there along with uh, Maggie Barry, who visited recently to visit the, the Forest Park and his role, his new role uh, as Associate uh, Minister. Uh, and it's a wonderful part of, of the, of, uh, of the valley. It's a wonderful part of Lower Hutt. It's a wonderful part of the Lower, lower North Island. But there's no cell phone coverage. And every summer, uh, people, oh, it seems like every summer anyway, sir, people go missing in the Rimataka Forest Park. And it's a real hassle for the dock rangers that go in and out. And it's a hassle for the people who work in and around the park. Uh, and uh, it needs and deserves cell phone coverage. And that's the whole point of the Rural Broadband Initiative. For major tourist hotspots, for major areas that are missing out, uh, you do a co-investment 
uh, along with the ultra-fast broadband uh, partners and the telcos uh, in order to uh, make a co-investment by the Crown and those, and those companies in order to provide coverage that wouldn't otherwise, exist, it wouldn't otherwise exist if things were done on a purely economic basis. And so I'm very hopeful that the result of the commercial uh, negotiations between telcos uh, and the Crown will be that the Rimataka Forest Park uh, gets some cell phone coverage. That will be good for Wainui Amata, sir, and it will be good for the Hutt Valley. I call Melissa Lee. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And